بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم So yesterday we had started discussing the uh, the mabni and we explained mabni and ma shabah al mabni etc But now we're moving on to al mudhmarat So as we mentioned before there was an introduction to what mabni was and then the eight types of mabni that he discusses here so we have eight fasl So we're now on the first fasl where he discusses al-mudhmarat. So al-fasl awwal is al-mudhmar, also called dhamir. So al-mudhmar, ismun is a noun, wudi'a, which has been coined. Liyadulla ala mutakallim. So when you have a, a noun which shows the speaker, for example in English, I, we, or ana, nahnu, the na, the two. Al Mukhatib, Al Mukhatab, sorry. The person you're addressing, you, in English, you, all of them are plural. And all of them are the same. And Mukhatab, in Arabic, you have ka kuma kum ta tuma tum. Now, ghaib here, or a ghaib. Okay? This is a man'ut. Now, when you have mutakalim Mukhatab, you don't need to have previous reference to it. You don't have a marjit. So, a zamir has a marjit. Something refers to. When I say I, automatically you know that I'm speaking about me, this person. When I say you, you know I'm talking about you. When you say he, she, or they, we have to clarify who is meant by he, she, or they. So, taqaddama dhikru, this is a na'at. I, so we have to have, is a noun which has been coined to show, to denote a speaker, or a mukhatab, or a ghaib. A person, a third person. تَقَدَّمَ ذِكْرُهُ Whose mention has come before. Who has been mentioned before. لَفْضًا Now the way that the third person has been mentioned before, the most common way is this, لَفْضًا So for example, in this ayah, we have a dhamir. We have a dhamir, also known as مُذْمَر We have a dhamir, also known as مُذْمَر Okay? This zamir is for ghaib. What kind of ghaib? Whose mention has come before in wording. And this comes everywhere in language, all over the place. Yes, every single sentence you probably get one of these. You get a zamir, which is ghaib, and it refers to something that is mentioned previously. This is called taqaddama dhikruhu lafdhan. It's been mentioned previously in wording. You can actually see it. There's nothing much in here. The second aspect is, is taqaddama dhikruhu ma'nan. The word itself has not been mentioned, but the meaning, the concept has been mentioned. For example, I have two Quranic verses here. There's many, but there's two examples I gave you. I'dilu hu aqrabu li taqwa. So we have a dhamir. We have a dhamir. Or a mudhmar. And it is faghaib. Okay. Who is this referring to? Who is this Ghaib Dhami referring to? Al Adl. It can't refer to Eid Dilu because Eid Dilu is a verb. But it's referring to Eid Dilu has the meaning of Adl built in. The meaning of Adl is understood from Eid Dilu. So the Dhamir or the Mudhmar of Huwa refers to the meaning of Eid Dilu, which is Adl. The same thing applies here. For in Tubtum. فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ If you repent, فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ أي تُبْتُمْ has the meaning of tawbah built in and هُوَ ضمير which is a غائب ضمير is referring to the what? the meaning of tawbah فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ because tawbah is a masdar the tadhkir ta'ani doesn't matter فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ understood? so either The word has been mentioned explicitly, like Musa, or the meaning has been mentioned, like Adl and Tubtum. So even though the word Tawbah or the word Adl has not been mentioned, but the concepts, the meaning has been understood from the previous sentence or previous words. The third example is Hukman, is where the Dhamir has been mentioned. We have a Dhamir, Ghaib, but the Marjit, the, the antecedent. The thing towards this which it's referring 
has not been mentioned explicitly, but when we use a particular sentence, immediately we understand what is, what, what is being implied. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about death. So he says, Kalla idha balagat at-taraqiyya. So balagat at-taraqiyya. So taraqiyya is a maf'ul bihi. The zameen mustatir is here. If you look at the whole context, before this, there's no feminine zameer, or no feminine word, mu'annath word, towards which the he is zameer can refer back to. But when we talk about this, and tarqi is here, the tarqut, the collarbone, or right here by the throat. Yes, hulqum, so right here. So what which is the taraqi at time of death? A ruh. So ruh has not been mentioned, either in loves or in ma'na, in the previous sentence. But when we say this automatically, we know it means a ruh. You understand? Another example, Iblis, there's no mention of, in this conversation, before that, there's no mention of a jama' dhamir. But what did Iblis say? Anzirni ila yawmi yub'athun. Oh Allah, give me respite to the day that the people were resurrected. Not people, but they. Who does they refer to? It hasn't been mentioned. But it's, when you read it, you don't even have a question because you automatically understand it means here, uh, people, the creation. Now the example, يَسْأَلُونَكَ anil anfal. They ask you regarding the uh, booty and the wealth gathered in the war. So when you say يَسْأَلُونَكَ it means what? The Sahaba understood straight away. It's nothing difficult. So but you can have a غَائِبْ zamir, but it has to have something it refers to, known as the antecedent. This antecedent can either be mentioned explicitly in the wording, like Musa, or it can be understood from the context. It is mentioned not in word but in meaning. Idilu, tubtum. Or it can be hukman. It can be what? In a hukm. For example, Kalla ida balagati tarakia. The here is a me refers to a ruh. Yawma yubathun, the wild me refers to the people, the nas, al ibad. Understood? So if the me must refer back to an antecedent which has been mentioned previously. Now, Zama'ir are of two types. He's saying here, Muttasil, Al-Ittasala Yattasilu, to join. An Ittasala, nowadays it's called what? Communication, because they join people together. Wa huwa, is Zamir Muttasil, is that which, which cannot be used on its own. And this can either be Marfu, Mansub, or Majroor. These Muttasil Zamir, Zama'ir, cannot be used on their own. They must be used with either a fail. For example, darab tu. So the file is what? The tu. Ila darabna. So remember in saraf, we go daraba, daraba, darabu, daraba, darabata, darabna, darabta, darabtuma, darabtum, and we go darab tu, darabna. So we go what? First person, second person, sorry. We go Third person, second person, first person. In Nahwa, when they refer to the Ma'ir, they go like this. So the, so the tables are read in Nahwa, like darab tu, darab na, darab ta, darab tuma, darab tum, darab ti, darab tuma, darab tunna, daraba, daraba, darabu, darabat, darabata, darabna. They go first, second, third person, like English, how we have our tables. I sat, you sat, he or she sat, they sat. So he said darab tu to darab na, not daraba to darab na, like how we are accustomed to in Sarf. So in the books of Nahwa, the, the tables are read like this. From the first person, second person, third person. So darab tu, there's a mite at the end. So we have done this in already in many other books. So the daraba, daraba alif is a zamir, darabu the wawi is a zamir. So all of those zamair at the end, they are marfu, they can't come on their own. You never see the word tu on its own, or tuma on its own, or ti on its own, or tunna on its own. They are mutasil. Similarly, the zamir mansu. Hu huma hum ha huma hunna ni hunna al majroor nahu ghulami. This is the, on the majroor. He's given two examples because one is mudaf ilay and one is the majroor after harf and jar. So it's either marfu imma marfuun, either marfu like darab tu to darab na, or mansub like darabani until darabahunna, or majroor like ghulami and li until ghulami hinna and. Lahunna. Yes? So this is something quite simple we've done in the earlier books as well. And so the first is the kismain, the first kism is the muttasil, 
And the second qism is munfasil. And munfasil is what? Opposite. وَهُوَ مَا لَا يُسْتَعْمَلُ وَحْدَهُ Ji, what's the question? Go ahead. We, remember I explained that, we explained this, it came in Birkwi and it also I explained at the beginning of the uh, Arab section. One is, the question is, how can Izamir be marfu, mansub and majroor when they're mabani? So you have to remember, mabani does not and here we have here. The question we have is how can a zamir be marfu, mansub, and majroor when they are mabini? Let me explain this. Mabini is different types. You have harf mabini, you have fail, and you have ism. Now, ism, apart from the ism al fail, like sayhata, apart from that, all ism are all ma'mul. What does that mean? They occur in one of the marfu, mansub, and majru slots. Whether it's, marf, whether it's a mu'arab noun or a mabni noun, all nouns occur in a grammatical function. So then the mu'arab and mabni of a noun it implies that the arab cannot be displayed, but it will have an arab. Do you understand? It doesn't matter. So for example, Ja'a uh, Zaydun Zaydun is marfu because it's a fa'il but the arab is shown Ja'a Hada Hada is marfu it's a fa'il but the marfu arab is not shown because it's mabani so any noun that is mabani it just means that the arab is not depicted it cannot be shown the change brought about by the amil is not manifested but it does have an Arab. It has. It still has an Arab. That's why I say the Arab is mahalli. Does that clarify? In fact, when it's mabni, so the mabnis here don't uh, imply anything. If it's mabni, it doesn't have a mahalli Arab. It doesn't have a grammatical slot. So the mabni within here doesn't have a slot, and the mabnis here must be classified as marfu, mansub, or majrur. Has that clarified the question? Okay, so is Zamir, so next type of Zamir is Zamir Munfasil. Is the Zamir Munfasil, Wahuwa ma yusta'amalu wahdahu, is that which is used on its own. Ima marfu'un nahu ana ila hunna. Aw mansub nahu iyaya ila iya hunna. Zamir Majroor does not occur on its own. So you have ana, huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna, and iyaya ila iya hunna. Fadhalika sittuna Zamira. These are how many? 60 Zamir. So this is obviously, uh, this is from our Nahwa book. So it's not like how he's laid it out. But it just gives you a rough idea. So the yellows are the Zamir uh, Marfu'ah. The blue is Zamir Mansu. And the red, but supposed to be red here, is, is what? The Zamir Majroor. Okay? So you have here Marfu'ah on this side. Mansu here. Yes? And then this is Zamir Muttasil and Munfasil. Muttasil and Munfasil. And these are only Muttasil. Muttasil, sorry. So we have one set, two set, three, four, and five. We have five sets of Zamir. What we've done, we put the Mahdi, Mudari, Amr, and Nahi separately so you can clearly see the Zamir, what the Zamirs are. What is Zamir Mustatir, what is Badis, etc. Okay? And even Zamir Mansub, we put one example of Maf'ul, one of the Isam of Inna. So you can see its usages. But it's the same thing. Okay? So we've got many columns, but in the theory, there's only five Zamir mar Marfu, Zamir Marfu Muttasil, Zamir Marfu Munfasil Muttasil, Zamir mar Mansub Muttasil, Zamir Mansub Muttasil, and Zamir Majrum Muttasil. So you sing all together. They are 60. So we need to make sure I get a mask correctly. I might embarrass myself with my mask here. So we have 5 times 14 is equal to 60. 70. We said there's 60. The reason, so there are 70 that we read, but there's 60 because if you look at it here, Alif, Alif is the same. Tuma, Tuma, 
is the same. So this is not 14, it's actually 12. So now if you do 5 times 12, it becomes 60. So because it counts the, the jewel, so for example here, Huma, Huma are the same. Kuma, Kuma is the same. So because of that, we remove, it's not 14. So even though they exist for different persons, they're still the same form. So if you count the meanings, so the 70 sera min hayithul ma'na. And the 60 min hayithul love. So the 60 sera. Understood? Good. Now, shall we go ahead? Everybody understand this? Yeah? Okay. Now. The Zamir Marfu, which means this table here. And not the Munfasil. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. So we're dealing now Zamir. Marfu Muttasil. The Zamir Marfu Muttasil in those places highlighted by an ash, asterisk. Yeah, asterisk. However, it's pronounced. Yes. In these places, they have what? They're hidden. Because why? The dhami comes at the end of the verb, after the verb. So for example, fa'ala, fa'ain lam, is the form of the verb. Can you see anything after fa'ala? No. So we see here the dhami is hidden. There's a huwa hidden in here. Fa'ala, this ta is not a dhami. This ta is what? Alamatut ta'neeth. Yes, so this ta means what? The ism is mu'annath. And this ta with a sukun on top means the fail is mu'annath. So after the fa'ala and the ta alam ta'anif, can you see a, can you see a zamir? No. I can see fa'ala, lu, fa'ala ta, fa'alna ta, tumatum ila akhirihi. Yaf'alu, you can't see anything. Yaf'alani, noon is alamatul a'rab. And the alif is a zamir. Wow is a zamir here. Taf'alu, you can't say anything. Taf'alu, nothing after the lam. Af'alu, naf'alu, you can't say anything. The alif, the hamza here, the noon, those are alamat of the kallum. The zamir comes at the end. So these, one, two, two in here, three, four, five, six, seven, and then amr and nahi. So here you have seven, if you call the amr and nahi, a separate or a part of Mavari, you can either get seven or nine. The nine situations where you have Zamir Mustatir, where there's no special form of the Zamir itself, it exists within the verb. So we say, for example, here is Hua, and here you have Hia, and here you have Hua, and here is a Hia, and here is Anta, and here is a Ana, and here is a Nahnu, and here is a Anta, and here is a Anta. And in Fa'ala, so in Fa'ala, the fa'il is zamir mustatir, huwa. In fa'ala, the zamir is alif. In fa'alu, the zamir is a waw. In fa'ala, the zamir is here hidden. Fa'alata, zamir is alif. All of that mentioned in the brackets afterwards. Is that clear? Has everybody understood this? So zamir mustatir are the ones of asterisk, which they don't have a form after the verb. And the others that have a form after the verb, they are known as the zamir and the bodies. So all the zamir mustasil can be divided into two categories. Must, uh, mustatir, the ones marked off with the asterisk, and bodies, those that have a form. Everybody following me? Any questions? Okay. So that's what he's saying here. Wa'lam, no. Anna al-marfu al-muttasila. That the Zamir Marfu Muttasil Khasatan, especially not the Mansub, not the Majroor, nor the Marfu Munfasil. None of those. Only the Marfu Muttasil is what? Mustatir. Okay? And in the Madi, he's running through the table, the which ones are Zamir Mustatir. And I've explained that in the table already. Lil Ghaibi wal Ghaibati Kadaraba ay huwa. Wa darabat ay hiya. So in Daraba, the Zamir is huwa. Wa fil mudari. Al mutakalli mutlaqan. I all all mutakallim, whether singular or whether plural. Nahu adribu, I ana, wa nadribu, I nahnu. Walil mukhatab, kat tadribu, I anta. 
walil ghaib wal ghaiba ka yadribu ay huwa wa tadribu hi ay hiya okay right so we've covered till here everybody with me so far the last thing he's mentioning in this section so far he's saying that the sifat and the sifa means ismul fa'il ismul maf'ul as sifatul mushabbahatu bi ismil fa'il and ismu tafdhil all of these also have a zamir mustatir so all of these fa'ilun ta fa'ilat maf'ulun ta maf'ulat wajilun ta wajilat and akbaru ta kubrayat all of these when they don't have the file after them if i say for example uh mukhtalifun alwanuhu then there's no zamir mustatir because the alwan is a fa'il the fa'il is here if i say for example uh khaliqun huwa khaliqun then in here there's going to be zamir mustatir huwa so all of the sifat i.e. the mushtaqat ism al fa'il ism al maf'ul as sifat al mushabbah to be ism al fa'il ism al tafdil all of these have a zamir mustatir inside of them mutlaqan whether they're singular dual or plural mudhakkar mu'annas sorry mufrad muthanna ajama' mu'annas so mudhakkar mu'annas all forms mutlaqan they have a zamir inside of them zamir mustatir which we can't see this alif is alamatul tasniya wow is not the fa'il wow is the alamatul uh, jam okay according to that's how it's mentioned in the books okay do you understand everybody with me yeah okay now he's saying next what he's mentioning is that you have to use zamir muttasil unless you can't use munf you have to use muttasil unless you can't the so muttasil comes first if you can't then you can use munfasil so wala yajuz istimal al munfasil illa in the ta'adhur al muttasil you can only use zamir munfasil when the zamir muttasil can't be used it's not possible to use zamir muttasil for example iyyaka na'bud the iyyaka is brought first to create taqdeem and taqdeem creates the emphasis creates emphasis oh, only you we worship now we can't say here ka na'budu cuz the zamir is what so we can say na'budu ka but it wouldn't give the desired meaning so we bring taqdeem when you bring taqdeem now we can't bring ka na'budu we have to say iyyaka so as long as possible we use zamir muttasil so for example you wouldn't say darabtu iyyaka why not because it is possible to say darabtuka do you understand? So as long as zamir muttasil is possible, you use zamir muttasil. You only use zamir munfasil when it's not possible, or when you must bring zamir munfasil. So you wouldn't say daraba ana. You would say darabtu. Yes. What are you following me? You wouldn't say inna iyaka. You say innaka. But then you have to say innaka. Wa iyana, because now you can't bring zamir muttasil here. So indeed, you and us, or we and you, I don't know it's English. So inna ka wa iyana. So then, what happened here? You have to say iyana because inna ka wa na. So there. So when munfasil is not possible, sorry, that's badul ghalat. When zamir muttasil is not possible, then you can bring munfasil. Otherwise, you must bring what muttasil. Okay. Now the example, wa ma darabaka illa ana. Create emphasis. So if I say ma dar, say darabtuka, I hit you. But it's not emphasis saying it's only me that hit you. If you want to create emphasis, you bring ma and illa, harf istisna and nafi. So then you have to say now what? Illa, ana. You have to bring the ana separately. You can't bring it uh, with the previous. Uh, we can't bring muttasil because muttasil won't get the same meaning. You can't say ma darabaka illa tu. So you, here you have to bring zamir ma, uh, munfasil. Before we continue, so this, this to carry on from the question that was raised yesterday, that 
let me exp- let me explain this another way. Because somebody was asking that Iya ka na'bud, we can say na'buduka. So how are we then saying that Zamir Muttasil is muta'adhir? So let me rephrase this. When the meaning you want to express, when the meaning you wish to express, when that is when that allows you to use a Zamir Muttasil, then you must use Zamir Muttasil. And when the meaning you wish to express in Arabic, if that structure does not allow you to use Zamir Muttasil, then you're allowed to use Zamir Munfasil. So, Iyaka Na'bud, the ma'na that is tried to imply is what? A ibadah with the maf'ul bihi mu'akkad. So, the maf'ul bihi mu'akkad can only be expressed, or one way of expressing it is with taqdeem. So, yes, Na'buduka can be said, but Na'buduka does not have the meaning of tawqeed in it. So, therefore, Na'buduka will not give us the desired meaning. The desired meaning of bringing maf'ul will have to bring the maf'ul bihi muqaddam. When you bring the maf'ul bihi muqaddam, it can't be muttasil. So now you have to bring munfasil. Does that clarify the question? Similarly, wa ma darabaka illa ana. So when you say ma darabaka illa ana, the meaning that is being is that is intended to be portrayed is that the darb maf'ul bihi of darb is the mukhatab and the fa'il is the mutakallim, but that meaning needs to be emphasized. So now, we have to emphasize this meaning. And this emphasized meaning comes about with illa. Now when you, when you express this meaning with illa, can you use zamir muttasil? No, you have to use zamir munfasil. So in this case, you're allowed to say, ma darabaka illa ana. As opposed to, qama ana. If you wish in your mind, you have a mafhum, a, a tasawwur, where you want to express, Standing and the person doing the standing is me without mention or uh, without in, implication of any emphasis or anything else. Then you just say qama ana. You can't say qa. So that can be expressed using qum too. So you won't be able to say qama ana. Does that clarify now? Okay. So if you want to say, it is I who stood up, you can say, for example, and that meaning, it is I who stood up. Now you can say, ma qama illa ana. So that meaning is expressed using this structure. So this structure, can you, this structure, so the meaning you have in your mind is expressed using this structure. This structure does not allow zamir muttasil. So you allow to use zamir munfasil. Okay. If you want to use a structure where I say, qumtu, qumtu. Ana. The tawqeed cannot, that tawqeed cannot be brought in a muttasil. You have to bring it munfasil. Do you understand? So basically saying if the, sh- whatever sentence you wish to say, however you wish to express it, if that expression allows you to use zamir munfasil, muttasil, you must use zamir muttasil. And if the structure does not allow you to use zamir muttasil, then you have to use zamir munfasil. Okay? Okay, moving on, we have something called Zamirul Sha'ni or Zamirul Qissa. It is not exactly, but it's similar to the concept of what we have in English called Dummy It. Yes, it's called a Dummy It. So, for example, we start sentences with the word It, even though that It has no antecedent, it doesn't refer to anything before it. So, for example, you can say, It is amazing that. So what does it refer to? It refers to something that comes after it. So for example, it was amazing that this student memorized the entire text in such a short period of time. So it is amazing, or it was amazing. This it has no antecedent. It's not referring to anything prior to it. It's just there to establish a sentence. Similarly, in the Arabic language, the Arabs use something called, uh, they use a zamir, which is similar to this. It, it has no antecedent. It's zamir. It is a ghaib zamir, always singular. And it doesn't refer to anything before it. It just creates emphasis. How? Because when you mention a zamir, there's no marjit. Your mind starts to think, what's being mentioned here? Nothing has been mentioned before. So by saying this, it creates a ta'zim, a grandeur, a, a focal point on the words after it, the sentence after it. 
So the sentence after it actually clarifies and, and explains what its intended meaning is. But this dhamir itself is singular and is ghaib. It can be masculine or feminine. But it has no marja, it has no antecedent, it doesn't refer to anything. There's no taqaddama uh, dhikruhu. The dhikr hasn't come before, either lafzan, ma'nan or hukman. It hasn't mentioned before. It is mentioned there and it just draws the attention of the speaker. And what does he do? Makes him focus on the ma'ba'dahu, on the jumla which comes after it, which uh, the tafsir of it explains what is meant. So for example, look, we have here, wa'lam anna lahum. Know that they have a zamir. The Arabs, they have a zamir. Where does the zamir occur? Yaqa'u qabla jumlatun. Qabla jumlatin. Yaqa'u qabla jumlatin tufassiruhu. This zamir occurs before a jumla. Tufassiruhu, which clarifies it. So know that the zamir, the, the Arabs use a zamir which has no antecedent. And this dhameer, because it is not known what it's referring to, the sentence after it clarifies it. Just as in our English example, it was amazing. And the sentence after that clarifies what is meant by it. The same occurs here. Do you understand? The same occurs here. وَيُسَمَّى ذَمِيرَ الشَّأْنِ فِي الْمُذَكَّرِ In the mudhakkar form, you call it dhameer al-shaan. And in, in, zameer, in muannas form, you call it dhameer al-qissa. Or you summa, it is called Zamir al-Sha'an. If it's a Muzakkar Zamir, and if it's a Mu'anna Zamir, it is called what? Zamir al-Qissa. Okay? And by example, it should become clearer, inshaAllah. For example, we have here, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Now this is beginning the surah. So the huwa, it has no marjit. There is no marjit. It doesn't refer to anything mentioned before it. It's only referring to something after it. So this huwa, it occurs before a jumla. Yes? And this jumla does what? To fassiruhu. It clarifies, explains what is meant. So by, by saying qul huwa, so you stop there, you think, what is being said? Allahu ahad. This creates a focal point on, on Allahu ahad. That's why if you look at the translations, uh, if you look at the, on uh, Islam Awaken, the translation, most, most translators haven't translated the Zamir. I think only one translator has mentioned it. it. The fact is, the truth is, the issue is, the matter is, it is Allah who is one. Well, no, not really. No, the translation is not correct. But anyways, but in, in there, the huwa, that translation is not correct. Hu Allahu ahad. So this means here, Allah is alone. And by saying huwa first, it creates, uh, it draws the attention of the speaker to the jumla which is after it. And that's a muzakkar Zamir. And he writes from the Quran, and the Mu'anna Zamir says, Wa innaha Zainabu qa'ima. And it is Zainab who is standing. When you say innaha, no Zamir, a Zamir without an antecedent, you think, what is being said? So then this creates a, it draws a special attention towards this sentence here. Okay? So for example, here we have, Qul uhiya ilayya. Beginning of Surah Al Jinn. Beginning of a Surah, we know for sure there's no antecedent. Annahu. So then you think, Annahu, who is it referring to? This is a Dhamir, Dhamir al-Sha'an. What does it do? It draws your attention to think that what's happening, what is it referring to, what is being implied. And the sentence after it, the Jumla, after it, what does it do? It, Tufassiruhu. Tufassiruhu. So, yes? You got it? Okay. Similarly, وَاقْتَرَبَ الْوَعْدُ الْحَقِّ The true promise has come close. فَإِذَا هِيَ شَاخِسَةٌ أَبْصَارُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Okay. So now this Zameer here, it has no marjit. It, it, it doesn't refer to anything. It's called Zameer al-Qissa. So if you have a Zameer, called what? Zameer al so Zamir al-Qissa or Zamir al-Sha'an, same thing, one is Muzakkar, one is Mu'annad. So when you say here, Iqtarab al-Wa'd al the true promise has come close, meaning the hereafter and death, etc. So, فَإِذَا هِيَ Now what is here referred to? It doesn't refer to anything. When it doesn't refer to anything, your attention is drawn. What is being said? 
So then now you have here, Shakhisa is the ism al-fa'il. And Abu Sa'ar al kafaru becomes the fa'il of the ism al-fa'il. No, because he, has, he can't refer to this because Al-Wa'ad al-Haq is Mudhakkar. And this is what? But it, is, it can't be referring to that because the gender is different. No, because if he was referring to that, it would be Mudhakkar. Okay, it would have to be Mudhakkar. So we know now that this here doesn't refer to Wa'ad al-Haq because the gender is different. Okay? Another example. Ya Bunay, O my son. Luqman alayhi salatu wassalam he says ya bunay innaha innaha again has no marja so innaha the matter is the issue is the fa is and then this is this intakun intakum mithqal habbatin min khardarin fatakun fi thaqlin aw fi samawati aw fi al-ard ya'ti biha Allah so the ya'ti biha Allah is the khabar of this intaku the sharr jawab sharr but the innaha is the zamirul qissa the zamirul Tissa. What does it do? It draws the attention of the speaker. It has no antecedent. It comes in a mudhakkar. It comes in a mufrad, ghaib form. Either mudhakkar or mu'annas. When it's mudhakkar, you call it zamiru shan. When it's mu'annas, you call it zamiru tissa. And the purpose of this, from a balaga aspect, is to draw the attention of the addressee and the mukhatabun towards the mutakallim and the statement he's going to make in the following sentence. Understood? Any questions before we move ahead? Okay. Can you please relate the question to me? What's the question? Yes. No. The ittisal, the first question is, is the by accident or by, co by coincidence, we had here the Zamirul. No. So Zamirul Shan and Zamirul Qissa can be, can, they have to be, they, they, are usually, they don't have to be marfu', they don't have to be muttasil or munfasil. For example, قول huwa, that huwa is what? It's a Zamir. أَنَّ لَهُمْ ضَمِيرًا It won't be majroor, but it'll be either mubtada or it will be preceded by a nasikh, kana or inna, usually inna. Okay, so it doesn't have to be marfu or mansu, particularly it can be either one of the two of them. It doesn't have to be muttasil or munfasil. Okay, is that the two questions that you had? Yes? Okay. The next thing we're discussing is zamirul fasl. What does zamirul fasl mean? That between the mubtada and the khabar, you can bring a marfu munfasil zamir. Between mubtada and the khabar. When we say Mubtada, we mean Mubtada in its original form, or, a, or what was Mubtada before, i.e. Isam of Kana, Isam of Inna. So any of these, between them and their Khabar, we can have a Zamir, Marfu, Munfasil, which matches the Mubtada or the Isam. Okay? And this is called, if you leave a few lines, we leave the few lines out, Wa Yusamma Fasla. This Zamir is called Zamir al-Fasl. So between the Mubtada or the Isam and the Khabar, we can have a Zamir. And what does the Zamir do? The Zamir, uh, purpose mentioned later on. The Zamir is called Zamir al-Fasl. I, Yawm al-Fasl, the day which will differentiate. So Fasl is Zamir which creates what? A differentiation. How does it differentiate? Yafsulu bayn al-Habari wa sifati This Zamir differentiates between the Khabar and the Sifa. For example, if I say Zaydun Al Qaim, is Al Qaim the Khabar or is Al Qaim the Sifa? The Naat. Al Qaim is But what if it's a Khabar? Zayd is the one standing. It could be both. Do you understand? So when I say Zaydun Huwa Al Qaim, what does it become now? Khabar. And Zayd al-Qa'im, in theory, could be the standing Zayd, or Zayd is the one standing. Both possibilities. When I bring a differentiating Zamir, a decisive Zamir, the Zamir uh, explains that now al-Qa'im has to be what? 
the khabar. Do you understand? That's why called zamirul fasl. And then he says here in between, Ida, there's two conditions. The khabar has to be ma'rifah. If the khabar is nakira, then not say Zaydun huwa qa'imun. You can say that, but that will not be zamir al fasl, that will be tawkid. So if you have, for example, Zaydun qa'imun. Zaydun qa'imun. Okay? I can put huwa here, that won't be zamir al fasl. What would that be? Tawkid. Tawkid, lafzi. Okay? Yes? Okay. Aw af'alu min kada. Second condition, two options. Either the khabar is ma'rifa or the the or the khabar is ism tafzil with min. And he gives examples here at the bottom. For example, Zaydun huwa al-qa'im. So what do we have? Between the mubtada and the khabar, what do we have? A dhamir marfu munfasil, which is this. And this now allows us, and the khabar is also a ma'rifa. Now we call this dhamir zamir al fasl. And this dhamir differentiates between what? The second word being khabar and na. Another example. Wa kana zaydan huwa afdala min amrin. We have uh, is, uh, isam of kana. So Mubtada also refers to all the Isam when they have Nawasik before it. So Zaydun, the Isam of Kana. Then the Khabar is what? Af'alu min kada. An Isam Tafzil with Min. So then we say here Afdala min kada becomes the Khabar. And this Huwa becomes what? Zamirul Fasal. Yes? An example he gives here. Wa qala Allah Ta'ala Kunta anta al-raqiba alayhim. That Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, he said that if people worship some me or my mother after I passed away, you were the one looking after them. I don't know. So, Kunta anta raqiba alayhim. You were the one looking after them. You were the one overlooking them. So, anta is what now? What is anta? It's a zamir munfasil. I call it zamir al fasl. Okay. And just to finish off here, that zamir al fasl is a uh, one term, some books really, but they call it Zamir Imad, it's a Kufi term. So Zamir al Fasl is a Basri term, the Ulama of Basra, they call it Zamir al Fasl. But some books we mention, or some Arab Quran or Tafsir we mention Zamir al Imad. What do they call it? Zamir Imad. Same, same purpose. Some even call it Zamir Di'ama. Yes, what do they call it? Zamir Di'ama. Right. What's the Arab of this? Innaka anta al Alim al Hakim. Inna Harf Mushabbahun Mil Fad Ka is Mil Fad Ka is the Isab If you say so Anta is what? Dhamirul Fasal And this becomes Two Khabars What if I say Harf Mushabbahun Mil Fad I say no. I say, this is Mubtada. This is Khabar. A Mubtada and Khabar become Khabar again. Of Innaka. But if I say, Innaka, or Mushabbal will fail, Ka is the Isam, and Anta is what? Tawkidun. Lovely. So you can have three out of this sentence. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ You can do it Arab three ways. You can say, أَنْتَ الزَّمِيلُ الْفَاصِلُ You can say, أَنْتَ الْمُبْتَدَى عَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ is khabar, awal khabar thani, and mubtada khabar become the khabar of the إِنَّكَ Or you can say, the أَنْتَ is what? تَوْكِيدٌ أَفْضِيٌ It will have slight implication different, but more or less the same thing. But it's a bit like a latifa, a bit of a fa'idah. Any questions? No? Everybody following? Yes? Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallah, wa bihamdi, kawana shadu, la ilaha illa anta, wa nasakhfir, kawana tubu ilayk.